Number 65, unreasonable results. A car advertisement claims that its 900 kilogram car accelerated from rest to 30 meters per second and drove 100 kilometers, gaining three kilometers in altitude on one gallon of gasoline. The average force of friction, uh, including air resistance, was 700 newtons. Assume all values are known to three significant figures. Letter A, calculate the car's efficiency. All right, so to let's first start with that. Um, so letter A, it says calculate the car's efficiency. So the efficiency formula is down here on the bottom right. Okay, so it says the efficiency all right, will be measured as the work right, put out by the system divided by the energy uh, put into the system. So the energy put into the system is going to be the energy that is inherent in one gallon of gasoline. Now, if we notice in the upper right hand column, this comes right from the textbook that one gallon of gasoline um, produces 1.2 times 10 to the eight joules, right, of energy. So the value down here is 1.2 times 10 to the eight joules, all right? Now the question is how much useful work was done by the car's engine here? Well, there's a couple of forces, right? And by the, not only a couple of forces, but there's really a couple of uh, three different types of energy here, right? So if we think about it, um, one type of energy is kinetic energy here, all right? Uh, taking the car from zero meters per second to 30 meters per second required an increase in kinetic energy. Where did that kinetic, kinetic energy come from? It came from the energy that's inherent, part of the energy that's inherent in the gasoline. Next, the gravitational potential energy of the car has also increased. It started, let's just say, at 0 0.0. It increased its altitude by three kilometers, it said, so therefore now at this particular point, this car also has some potential energy due to gravity. Okay, so that is the second type of energy. And where did that energy come from? The gasoline. Also, it told us that there was a force of friction, right? Uh, the average force was 700 Newtons. And we are to assume that that was the average force over this entire distance that the car drove. And it said that the car drove 100 kilometers. And therefore, um, you know, thinking about the work, thinking about this formula over here, it says that the force applied over a certain distance, we need to perform work in order to uh, maintain a force over a distance. So the work here uh, that was done was the work to overcome friction over this distance. All right, and where did that energy come from? It came from the gasoline. So let's calculate those three types of energies and then we'll, all add, uh, we'll add it all together and that should be then the total work put out. Okay, so let's just focus on kinetic energy first, one half, M, and I'll really talk about change in kinetic energy, right? So the, um, I mean, we could just also say just the final value. That's totally fine too, because we know it started with zero. So that's fine. We'll simplify it a little bit, right? So the final kinetic energy would be the final, equal to the final velocity squared. So the uh, final kinetic energy here should be equal to then one half. Actually, you know what? Let me... Let me leave everything, I'm gonna calculate it all at once. All right, so here's the kinetic energy. We know those variables. Let's do the potential energy, okay? So the potential energy here was due to gravity, right? The gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh. And we do know all of these, right? We know the height. Remember though that they gave it to us in kilometers, we need it in meters, so just multiply that value by 1,000, so that's 3,000 meters, okay? Not a problem, but we do know uh, this formula as well. And then we also realize that uh, to overcome the force of friction over a certain distance, we needed to perform work, right? So I'm going to use this formula over here. So the work done to overcome friction was equal to uh, the force due to friction multiplied by uh, the distance over which the car traveled multiplied by the cosine and the angle between these two vectors. But I'm just going to make sure that this value comes out to be positive, all right? So I don't really care about this term necessarily because I know that there is work being done to overcome that friction, right? Friction always opposes the motion. So in order for the car to reach its final point, it had to overcome this force of friction, right? So it had to do a positive amount of work to overcome that, although the friction, the frictional force is pulling energy out of the system, right? That's just what the negative sign would have implied there. So in any case, I have this formula, right? So I, I as I stated before, we know that the uh, total work put out, right, should be equal to the kinetic energy the final kinetic energy, plus the uh, final really potential energy, right, uh, due to gravity, All right? So I'll put a little F there. And then plus then the work uh, to overcome friction. So here we can simply now start plugging in the values. So the work put out 
would be equal to one half for kinetic energy. It would be one half times the mass of the object, which was 900, uh, multiplied by then the final velocity squared, which was 30 right, meters per second squared, plus then the potential energy due to gravity. Again, that's MGH, so the mass of the object was 900. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. The final height was 3 kilometers, or aka 3,000 meters. And then plus now the work due to friction. Remember, it's just the force of friction times the distance the car traveled. So the force of friction, the average force of friction was 700 newtons multiplied by the distance. Now the distance they gave us in terms of kilometers, we have to multiply that by 1,000 to get the meters. So it'd simply be 100,000 meters. And finally, we can just calculate this all now. So point, uh, so point 0.5 times 900 times 30 squared plus 900 times 9.8 times 3,000 plus 7, 000, excuse me, 700 times 100,000. All right, so we get a value here of about 9.69, right? 9.69 times 10 raised to the, what value is this? Seven, times 10 raised to the seven, and that's in terms of joules, all right? So now what we're gonna do here, let's go back to our simple formula over here. So the efficiency now, oops, the efficiency now will simply be the work put out, which we just found to be about 9.69 times 10 to the 7 joules, divided by the energy put in, which was the total energy inherent in a gallon of gasoline, which is 1.2 times 10 to the 8 right joules. They're both in joules, so that's great because the efficiency should be unit less. Right? It should have no unit. And now we just calculate. So let's take that value divided by 1.2 times 10 to the 8th. And it comes out to be about 81% or so, or 0 0.8, you know, 0 0.07, somewhere around there, okay? I really should have two sig figs, actually, so 0 0.81. So this is the efficiency, about 80%. So that takes care of letter A. Letter B, what is unreasonable about the result? Well, you'd have to know a little bit about gasoline efficiency in order to, to kind of know why this is unreasonable. It's just a very high efficiency, okay? Uh, I mean, most... Most engines do not even operate close to that level of efficiency. Um, most reside in somewhere between an efficiency of 20, you know, to 40% or so. So uh, this is, you know, depending upon where I am in this range, it's almost two to three times more uh, than the average efficiency of most engines here. So it's just a little unreasonable there. So the answer, so that would be, you know, I'm not going to write that all out, but that would be the Unreasonable result, and then let us see what which premise is unreasonable. Well, I mean, you know, either there's no way that the they consumed only one gallon of gasoline, you know, traveling a hundred kilometers here, um, or you know, increasing their altitude by three kilometers. One of them is wrong. I mean, it's reasonable to go from zero to thirty meters per second, but either the distance total distance calculated was incorrect or the altitude was incorrect. So, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. That'd be awesome. I would thank you so very much. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.